a very interesting anecdote from my personal life which saved my life and today I'm standing just because of following the basics. As you heard in my introduction, I'm an ex armed forces officer. After passing out from the Naval Officers Academy in the early 90s, I found myself on a ship in Mumbai as an officer cadet and the ship sailed for patrolling on the India-Pakistan maritime border. And one evening, the commanding officer spotted a suspicious boat and we headed for that boat which means we went close to that boat and the procedure at sea is you use a loud hailer to talk to the boat and make him stop and you stop your own ship. Now the ship is large, the boat is close, bo boat is small and boat is usually made of wooden material and also you do not know what is present on the boat. So you lower a rubber dinghy and you send five of your trained people with arms to go and investigate that boat. We call this boarding party. So I found myself in a dinghy that particular evening as the officer cadet with four Jawans with me, all with arms. We went to this boat, a Pakistani boat, well in, in Indian waters, about 10 kilometers. And uh, it's a long procedure how we do it. So there were about eight people. We spent about an hour the way we are trained to find out whether they're having any contraband, they're terrorists or they're what. And eventually we realized they're just innocent fishermen who have strayed into our water. So I, using the VHF uh, walkie-talkie, I told the commanding officer these are fishermen. But then they are in Indian waters, well within Indian waters, and we'll have to treat them according, in accordance to the law, which means we'll have to arrest them and take them to the Gujarat police and hand them over. There were eight people, so I decided to send six of them back to the ship. So we were left with two people, Pakistani fishermen on the boat. I wanted them to be there on, that, on their own boat because they are the ones who own it. They are the ones who know if something goes wrong at this boat, how to correct that. And I was there along with these four people. They were harmless fishermen. We made them sit down on one, one side. And my commanding officer came on the walkie-talkie at that point and they said, Kulpreet, there are a couple of, there are a few other boats we can see on the radar which also looks suspicious. And we had strong information about contraband. And he wants to go there. And I said, sir, please go ahead. Aye, aye, sir. Perfect. Roger. And the boat, the ship went away. And it was dusk. And then soon it was dark. And if you want to know what darkness really is, you should be in the middle of an ocean when, where there is no moon. So we had only stars. And after a while, the ship went out of sight. I tried to call on walkie-talkie. Walkie-talkie, as you technical people know, is line of sight communi communication. So after 12 nautical miles, it doesn't really work. So I was not able to communicate with my ship. And the weather deteriorated, the wind picked up, and my boat started drifting. Now I don't know which direction my boat is drifting. I know I'm 10 kilometers from Pakistani waters. So I told that fisherman, please start the boat and start heading towards east, because from that reference point, east was India, and northwest was Pakistan. And he started, he said, yes, sir. And he started moving. I did not have a GPS or a sat nav to find which direction we were going. And after about 10 minutes or so, I was, I began to wonder, is this boat really going towards the Indian coast? Because there are no reference points. You can't really make out which direction this boat is going. And at that point, I remembered Naval Officers Academy instructor who taught me, who had taught me, and I paid attention in the class to the basics, astro navigation. And when we were officer cadets in the academy, astro navigation was the least preferred subject. We were not interested in it because we never thought a situation would arrive where we would, we would have to navigate our ships using stars or the moon or the sun during the daytime because we had satellite navigators at that time. Satellite used to call them. We also had GPS fitted on some of the ships. But a situation did come at some point. And that day, I knew, I remembered, I recalled, that North Star is, corresponds usually, uh, corresponds to the latitude of the place that you are in. And we were of Gujarat, which means Tropic of Cancer, which means 22.5. So if this is 90, this is 45, this is 22 and a half. And I looked around and I found two bright, spot, bright, bright stars in two different locations. And one of them is a North Star, but I still do not know. I also remembered that there were other constellations and you can draw an imaginary line from the little spade. <coughs> can you hear me still? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. 
So I was able to spot these <laughs> constellations and find out for sure that this is the North Star. And the moment I found this is North, I knew this is South, and this is East, and this is West. And I said, oh my God, this fisherman is taking us bang in the northwesterly direction, 320 bearing, which means we're going heading straight for the <coughs> Karachi Harbor. And a boat does about 15 kilometers an hour, right? Two hours, we would have been well within Pakistani waters, and they also have law enforcement vessels like ours, and we would have been arrested and probably become history. Nobody would have known what would have happened to us, but still I remember. Just, just because I remembered, I said, no, change the direction, and we need to go in this direction. And we started going to the easterly direction, and that actually saved not just my life, but the lives of those four soldiers who were there with me.